Jay Uso goes on a date with Rhea Ripley, the WWE, and Triple H fire a top WWE superstar. Cody Rhodes made massive money on WWE's European tour. The WWE's ploy to get more heat for Dominic Mysterio exposed. Hulk Hogan signs a five-year deal with WWE. WWE SmackDown viewership sees an increase. Vince McMahon's Netflix documentary Filmmakers Contacted. Janelle Grant, Sasha Banks claims she is better than the whole AEW roster and more. Let's dive right in. The WWE and Triple H have fired a top superstar. A major WWE star has been released from the company due to controversial allegations. A new report has surfaced about the situation. Odyssey Jones has been the center of attention since he was reportedly let go from WWE and recently removed from the roster page. Earlier reports suggested that he was taken off WWE TV when allegations of domestic violence emerged. Dr. Chris Featherstone has now spoken to his sources to get more details about Jones' release. He posted a thread about Jones' departure from the company, mentioning that the issue had been ongoing for several months. It became public when one of the parties involved shared their side of the story on social media. The report also clarified that no domestic violence charges have been officially filed against Jones. Additionally, the other party involved has faced charges in the past for harassing friends and neighbors. The report further mentioned a negative history between Jones and his ex, with one party having previously sought a protection order. This situation has been unfolding for months, at least two, and it became public after one party began sharing their perspective on social media. As of this post, no domestic violence charges have been filed against Odyssey Jones. There have been past charges against the other party for harassing friends and threatening neighbors. There is a history of issues between Odyssey Jones and his ex, including a previous filing for a protection order. Further details are not available at this time. Nick Khan and Triple H are currently the top figures in WWE's business and creative areas. It remains to be seen how much they know about the situation and whether they will address it. Cody Rhodes made big money on WWE's European tour. WWE recently returned from a highly successful European tour, concluding with a Raw event in Denver, USA. As they continue to review the tour's financial results, it's clear that Cody Rhodes performed exceptionally well in merchandise sales. According to Sean Ross Sapp on Fightful Select, Cody Rhodes led the merchandise sales during WWE's European tour, securing the top spot, with CM Punk close behind in second place. At the Bash in Berlin event, the biggest selling item was Cody's signed weight belt, which drew significant fan interest and sales. Cody Rhodes also offered a custom German flag edition for the Bash in Berlin premium live event, which likely sold very well too. Cody Rhodes topped the European tour merch sales charts internally, with CM Punk at the number two spot. We're told the highest grossing item at Bash in Berlin was the signed Cody Rhodes weight belt. This isn't surprising, as Cody Rhodes consistently generates substantial revenue for WWE. It's also likely that he will continue to dominate merchandise sales for a long time. As the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Cody enjoys the perks of his title and his fans are still very supportive of his reign. While it's possible someone could outsell Cody Rhodes in the future, it's safe to say that the American Nightmare will continue to be a top merchandise seller regardless of the country. What's your opinion on Cody Rhodes' current status? in WWE? Do you think he's still going strong after finishing his story? The WWE's ploy to get more heat for Dominic Mysterio exposed. Former WWE head writer Vince Russo believes that Dominic Mysterio is not receiving genuine heat from the fans. Dominic, currently one of the top heels in WWE, teamed up with Liv Morgan only to be beaten by the Terror Twins, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley, at Bash in Berlin. The storyline continued on Raw this week, where the Judgment Day made their way to the ring. Once again, Dominic's promo was drowned out by boos from the crowd, making it hard for him to speak. On this week's episode of Legion of Raw, Vince Russo claimed that WWE was artificially enhancing the boos. He pointed out that the boos started immediately after Dominic said his first word. Russo also noted that Dominic consistently lowered his microphone after each word, as if he was following a script. If you don't think they're piping in the Dominic Mysterio heat, let me explain how you can tell they are. Dominic says one syllable and then immediately lowers the mic every single time because he's being cued to. They know as soon as Dom says one syllable, they cue the boos. And watch Dominic, he says, what? Ah! What would Dominic do if the crowd didn't boo? During the same discussion, Russo criticized WWE for blatantly using fake crowd noises during Dominic's promos. He felt the practice had become obvious and that savvy fans could easily see through it. If you do it once, that's one thing. But come on, bro, it's been 15 times. Every time there's a Dominic promo. It was another challenging night for the Judgment Day, as Damian Priest and Jey Uso defeated Finn Balor and JD McDonough in the main event. 
Hulk Hogan signs a five-year deal with WWE. Hulk Hogan has continued to stay active in WWE through various appearances and promotional events throughout the year. Hogan was featured in a promo package for the WWE Royal Rumble and took part in WWE advertising, including Fanatics Fest NYC. In October 2023, Hogan confirmed that he had re-signed with WWE, and he recently shared more details about his current deal and relationship with the company. During a conversation with Logan Paul on the Impulsive podcast, Hogan provided insight into his new WWE. WWE contract and his working relationship with WWE President Nick Khan. Hogan revealed that he has signed a five-year deal with WWE, which includes licensing and merchandising agreements, as well as ambassadorial roles. This deal allows Hogan to stay involved with WWE while also pursuing other projects, such as his Real American Beer brand. Working with Vince McMahon for all that time, and now working with Nick Khan. I signed a five-year deal. I'm 71 years old in a few weeks. I signed a five-year deal for the licensing and merchandising stuff, and ambassador stuff if they need me to do something for WrestleMania. I just love doing it. It's definitely different, Hogan shared. Hogan also discussed the differences between working with Vince McMahon and Nick Khan. While McMahon was deeply involved in the creative side of the business, Hogan described Khan as being more focused on business, making quick and practical decisions. Hogan shared a recent experience with Khan regarding the use of old WWE artwork for his real American beer brand, highlighting Khan's straightforward approach. What I feel with the leadership is working with Nick Khan now. He's more, for me, business cut and dry. He doesn't overthink the creative. Nick Khan is strictly business. I said, hey brother, this artwork that hasn't been used for 35 years, I need it for my real American beer. Nick Khan says, let me get back to you in a couple of days. No rush. He calls me back, we talked. I don't want to give numbers. You can use the artwork. I need X amount of percentage out of every million bucks you make. Instead of me paying you guys hundreds and thousands of dollars and potentially millions of dollars, I can go out for 300 bucks and have someone do this artwork that is reasonably similar, maybe reasonably confusing. Nick goes, let me just give it to you. Good, we're on the same team, brother. Nick was really cool. He made it really easy on me. Vince was great too, but I don't know if Vince would make that quick of a decision. Nick has been very easy, supportive, and helpful. Hogan explained, Hogan's Real American Beer was launched in June 2024 and his new deal with WWE has allowed him to use the brand's legacy and intellectual property in his business ventures. The legendary wrestler's ongoing relationship with WWE under Nick Khan's leadership seems to be smooth and mutually beneficial, ensuring that Hogan remains a prominent figure in the wrestling world while pursuing his personal projects. What are your thoughts on Hulk Hogan's new WWE deal and his comments about working with Nick Khan? WWE SmackDown viewership season increase. Friday Night SmackDown remains WWE's flagship show, consistently drawing a large audience and generating significant buzz. According to WrestleNomics, the August 30th edition of SmackDown saw a slight increase in viewership, attracting 2.054 million viewers, up from the previous week's 2.050 million. However, the show's rating in the key 18 to 49 demographic dropped slightly, achieving a 0.53 rating compared to the previous week's 0.56. This week's SmackDown was the go-home show before Bash in Berlin and featured several exciting moments. LA Knight retained his United States title against Ludwig Kaiser, while Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens had a confrontation ahead of their undisputed WWE Championship match at Bash in Berlin, among other notable segments. Stay tuned for more updates on WWE's Friday Night SmackDown as it continues to deliver thrilling moments and captivate wrestling fans worldwide. Vince McMahon's Netflix documentary filmmakers contacted Janelle Grant. The wrestling world is buzzing as Netflix prepares to release a highly anticipated documentary about WWE mogul Vince McMahon, titled Mr. McMahon. Set to premiere on September 25th, this six-part docu-series has been years in the making. Its release has been shrouded in controversy due to allegations against McMahon, including sexual trafficking and other legal issues that have cast a shadow over his legacy. Despite these controversies, it was confirmed that the documentary would go ahead, and as the release date nears, new details about the production process are emerging. Notably, it has been reported that the filmmakers reached out to Janelle Grant for an interview, but she ultimately decided not to participate. According to Post Wrestling Library Films, the production company behind Mr. McMahon made several attempts to secure an interview with Grant. Despite these efforts, no interview took place and Grant will not be featured in the documentary. Netflix's documentary group made initial outreach to Janelle's representation for an interview for this project. Despite this, no such interview came to fruition. Grant's absence from the documentary has sparked speculation about the balance and fairness of how McMahon's life and career will be portrayed. Cody Rhodes has commented on the situation, suggesting that there may be misinformation about WWE's level of involvement in the documentary's production. As the release date approaches, fans and critics are eagerly awaiting Mr. McMahon, 
wondering whether the series will provide an unbiased and comprehensive look at one of wrestling's most controversial figures. Given McMahon's complex legacy, marked by groundbreaking achievements in sports entertainment as well as serious allegations, there is a mix of anticipation and skepticism. Do you think the Vince McMahon Netflix documentary will offer a fair assessment of his life and career? Sasha Banks claims she is better than the whole AEW roster. WWE fans saw Sasha Banks leave the company in 2022, and she has not returned since. Despite rumors of a possible WWE comeback, she chose to sign with Tony Khan instead. At this stage in her career, Mercedes Moan is regarded as a top figure in the pro wrestling world. While the specific financial details of her AEW contract are not publicly known, it's clear she secured a substantial deal. Mercedes is thrilled with her decision, currently holding both the TBS and NJPW Strong Women's Championships. She has no regrets about joining AEW. In a recent episode of Beyond the Fame, Moan shared her enthusiasm about her role in Tony Khan's company, stating that AEW is where the best pro wrestling happens today. AEW is where the best wrestling is, and I'm the best wrestler in the whole world, she said. It's been so absolutely incredible being in AEW. I feel like to have a different opportunity to work with a lot of different people I've never worked with before excites me so much. I'm feeling nothing but amazing ever since I signed that dotted line with AEW. Professional wrestling, it's been the best it's ever been in the past 10 years, so I am so happy to be a part of the company, making headways. Mercedes Moan is now a dual champion, relishing her recent title defenses. On August 30th, she defended the NJPW Strong Women's Championship against Momo Watanabe at NJPW Capital Collision. Earlier, on August 25th, she retained the TBS Championship against Dr. Britt Baker at AEW All In. When asked which AEW star she'd like to face next, Moan expressed her ambitions. Mariah and the heavyweight championship, I'd love to face her. Tony Storm is incredible. Thunder Rosa, Chris Statlander, Jamie Hayter just made her return at All In, so I'd love to step in the ring with her. The dreams are endless there at AEW, because not only do I get the AEW roster, I get to face the stardom roster, the CMLL roster. AEW is going global, so any woman who wants to come after my championships, I'm always ready. Mercedes Moan's time in AEW has been marked by significant achievements and ambitious goals. Her passion for her role in the company and eagerness to embrace new challenges reflect her commitment to elevating the women's division and making a notable impact on the global wrestling state. As her journey unfolds, it will be intriguing to see how she continues to shape the future of AEW's women's division. Mercedes Monet is poised to elevate the brand bringing her unique charisma to every match. What are your thoughts on Mercedes Moan's impact in the pro wrestling world? How do you see her standing among the top women wrestlers today? Mandy Rose on her full-time return to wrestling. Mandy Rose has been on quite a journey since her unexpected departure from WWE in December 2022. Although she hasn't returned to the wrestling ring since then, she recently discussed her aspirations if she were to make a full-time return, as well as an upcoming wrestling-related appearance. After leaving WWE, Mandy saw it not as a setback, but as a chance to explore new opportunities. She has since focused on premium content creation, which has proven to be financially rewarding. However, Mandy's passion for wrestling hasn't disappeared entirely. The former NXT Women's Champion is set to make her first wrestling-related appearance in a long time at the Black Label Pro Wrestlers Combine at Crowning Glory. This event, sponsored by DraftKings, highlights the growing interest in independent wrestling and is scheduled for September 4th in Chicago. In an interview with Alfred Konua of Forbes, Mandy Rose shared that her participation in the event felt unique and different, though she hasn't yet decided if she will fully return to wrestling. Rose noted that working with Paragon and DraftKings has been exciting. While her appearance at the event has generated buzz, she suggested it's just a small preview of what could be. This event might inspire her to consider a more permanent return to the ring, but for now, she is taking things slowly. It was just so different and unique and I haven't made that decision yet if I am going to be stepping back in a ring full time or in any aspect. So it was just one of those things that it was unique. And Mojo, Raleigh, is a good friend of mine and I'm very proud of the work that he has done with Paragon, and I've been working with them. And DraftKings as well is a really great company as well to work with. So it was just something really cool and different and unique that maybe might kind of spark something as far as a Mandy Rose return or anything like that. I know it created some buzz and everyone thinks I'm getting back into wrestling for this, but yeah, this is just a little taste so we'll see how I feel afterwards. Mandy has also considered the possibility of joining AEW and potentially making a return to Raw or SmackDown, but has yet to make any firm decisions about her wrestling future. For now, she is focused on her upcoming appearance at the Black Label Pro Wrestlers Combine at Crowning Glory, which could set the stage for a significant comeback to a major promotion. What are your thoughts on Mandy Rose's upcoming appearance at the Black Label Pro Wrestlers Combine at Crowning Glory? 
the WWE's plans for Charlotte Flair upon her return. Charlotte Flair has been out of action since sustaining a knee injury during the December 8, 2023, episode of Friday Night SmackDown. Following surgery, Flair has been focused on her rehabilitation and her return plans are now becoming clearer. Recently, Flair provided an encouraging update on her recovery, revealing that she was back in the gym just 14 days after surgery. Her recovery has been swift and steady, with significant progress being made daily. The multi-time women's champion has even started training at the WWE Performance Center, surpassing the expected timeline for her rehabilitation. According to Viper reports, WWE is considering Flair for a future storyline involving a challenge against Nia Jax. This could potentially lead to a high-profile match against Tiffany Stratton at an upcoming premium live event. However, before Flair can enter this storyline, it appears Bayley is set to get a rematch with Nia Jax first. Aside from her recovery and training, Charlotte Flair is also making strides in the film industry with her role in the horror thriller movie, You Lose, You Die. Despite her ventures outside the ring, Flair's in-ring return is highly anticipated, and many expect her to quickly re-establish herself as a dominant force, potentially posing a significant threat to Nia Jax upon her return. Charlotte Flair's impressive progress and potential involvement in major storylines suggest that she could be back in WWE sooner than expected. Fans are eager to see what she has in store for her next chapter in WWE. Jay Uso goes on a date with Rhea Ripley. Jay Uso has shown a budding romantic interest in Rhea Ripley ever since she returned to WWE after recovering from a shoulder injury. Following the events of the September 2nd edition of Monday Night Raw, it seems Uso's wish to take her out on a date might soon become a reality. For weeks, Jay Uso and Rhea Ripley have been engaging in playful social media exchanges, hinting at mutual interest. This week on Raw, Ripley convinced Jay to team up with her fellow Terror Twin. Damian Priest, to face Finn Balor and JD McDonough in the main event. Additionally, Rhea Ripley was seen doing the Yeet chant alongside Jay Uso, Damian Priest, and the live audience in an off-air moment on Raw. Jay Uso then embraced Ripley, adding fuel to the speculation. Jay took to his Instagram stories to share a photo of the moment, expressing his confidence that Ripley would finally agree to the Waffle House date he had previously suggested. Next stop. Waffle House, moreover, Rhea Ripley participating in the Yeet chant after Raw and posting a photo of herself wearing Jay Uso's merchandise t-shirt on social media could indicate she's open to the idea of a date with the Yeet man, Jay Uso. With their social media interactions spilling over into Raw programming, it seems WWE might be building towards a romantic storyline between Rhea Ripley and Jay Uso. Could this be the start of a new romance angle? Do you think Rhea Ripley will finally say yes to a Waffle House date with Jay Uso? Fans are eagerly watching to see how this intrigues storyline unfolds.